I'm Lynn Givney, AccuQuilt's Chief Brand and Product Officer, and I want to welcome all of you to our trunk show called Quilts Around the World. I know that you're going to absolutely love the journey we are going to go on today. So let's get started by introducing your adventure guides, Pam and Erica. Hi, well, that's yes, a new Lynn. title. Yeah. I know. We've never been an adventure guide before. I feel like you should have boots and a compass. Okay. Yeah. Well, welcome, quilters. We are so excited to take you on this expedition. Quilts Around the World is a unique show that will give you a virtual tour of historical quilts. That's right. In today's show, we're going to take you on a behind-the-scenes trip to the International Quilt Museum. All right. We will also be sharing how you can use your AccuQuilt Go products to reimagine a couple of their historical quilts in the studio as we take you on this tour. Well, let's get the adventure started. All right. All right, quilters, welcome to the International Quilt Museum. Hi, welcome from Lincoln, Nebraska. We're here at the International Quilt Study Museum and we're so excited to be here today. Yes. And we're going to take you on an adventure from the outside in. And did you know that this quilt museum was founded in 2008, which was the same year as AccuQuilt? Oh, that's amazing. That's right. And it was entirely funded by private funds, donations, and 130 quilt guilds. Another fun fact is this building is meant to represent a quilt. So it has three floors or three layers like a quilt, the top, the batting, and the backing. You'll notice that the silver bars along the windows represent those stitches for a quilt. So let's go inside and check it out. All right, come on this way. Okay, that was such a windy it day. It was such a we were windy there. day. We were blown apart and it rained on us. Oh, but such a great place. It really was. And Quilters, this show is not only special just because we're taking you on a virtual tour. That's right, Erica. We want to dedicate this show to a very special person who was both an amazing friend to AccuQuilt and the International Quilt Museum. That's right. We want to dedicate this show to Mary Orecki. Mary had been an uplifting AccuQuilt team member for quite a while, traveling to shows for us until 2013, before she pursued a position at the Quilt Museum in Lincoln. She was someone that many people admired. Her sewing machine traveled with her to quilt shows, <laughs> and you would often find her sewing well into the evening afterward with the biggest smile on her face. Mary was an impressive artist, full of knowledge about quilting history and tradition. I have so many wonderful memories with Mary, and I miss all the joy she infused into everything that she did. I am proud to dedicate this amazing show to an amazing woman who touched the hearts of many with her talent and her personality. Oh, Mary was such an incredible person. And such an inspiration to so many. She was. Now, Lynn, how long did Mary work at the International Quilt Museum? So I believe she worked there over 10 years. Wow, wow that's yeah. amazing. Yeah. I bet she had such a wealth of information about the museum because not only of her knowledge of quilting history, but her work experience there as well. Absolutely. And speaking of the museum, do you know what I find fascinating about the building? No, no tell us. All right, so the brick facade and the relief around the building were done to look like quilt blocks. Every part of the building relates back to quilting. Oh, it's such a fabulous building, and we have so much more to share with everyone. Oh, that's right. Like how the reception room is shaped like the eye of a needle. Yes. But of course, the best part is the quilt collection. Indeed. Right? How's right. the museum? It's the largest publicly held quilt collection in the world. And it's right down the interstate from AccuQuilt on the east campus of the University of Nebraska. Go corn huskers. That's right. <laughs> Just wait until we show you what's inside this impressive building. Oh but before we go on any further trips, let's we have an amazing deal for you, everyone, today. So until midnight central time tonight, we are offering you 30% off your order. Plus, get free shipping if you spend more than $100 and live in the contiguous U.S. You'll need to use the promo code SUMMER30 for this amazing discount. Plus, if you spend more than $300, then we will gently and lovingly place a free Go Me fabric cutter starter set in your box. Some exclusions apply, so be sure to check the website for details. And Erica, that's not just a Go Me, right? It's the two dies that it's come with? It's the starter set, right? Yeah. So you've got a pattern booklet, two dies, a mat, you're all ready to go. All wow. ready to go. That's amazing. 
To get your order in during this show, you can use your phone's camera to capture this QR image here and go right to the site. If you don't have access to a QR reader, no worries. Open up a new tab in your browser, go to the top of your page, click on that plus sign. In that very top box, type in accuquilt.com slash party to place your order. That way you won't miss a minute of today's show, which is going to be phenomenal. Yes. You can also find our products at your local AccuQuilt retailer. To find the retailer closest to you, check out the store locator at the top of the page at AccuQuilt.com. Quilters, we know our dyes and fabric cutters are an investment, so AccuQuilt offers fast and easy financing with installments or split pay options. Mm -hmm. For more information on financing through AccuQuilt, visit AccuQuilt.com slash financing. All right, Lynn and Erica, I think it's time we take a look inside the Quilt Museum. Quilters, check it out. with Carolyn Ducey, the artist B. James curator of collections here at the museum. Welcome. Thank you so much for coming today. We're so happy you're here. So what room are we in? Well, this is where all of the magic happens. This is the Sarah and Byron Dillo um, conservation workroom. Wow. So this is where we do all of the work on the quilts and it's a constant effort. We have to um, refold the quilts every two years. So, oh, okay. you know, people get the idea that a quilt comes into the collection, it goes on the shelf and, and it sits there, but we really do have to constantly be working on the collection and its care. And it is something that we always tell people, it's just like at home, textiles can't just sit and, and be neglected. You need to keep an eye on them. You don't want anything to happen while they're in their boxes. You know, too much moisture can cause mildew, things like that. So. In this space, um, today we have our, our usual Thursday morning crew and their accessioning quilts. What does so, that mean? That means that um, they are looking at a new collection. These are Hopi quilts from mm -hmm. Arizona, a really exciting new collection donated by Carolyn O'Baggy Davis. And they are taking down all the information that we need for our database. We log in how the quilt was made, what the materials are, the size, the styles. Joanne is getting the um, label prepared, so each quilt has a unique number. Mm -hmm. And we write that on a small piece of bias tape, and then we, we baste it to the back of the quilt. Mm -hmm. And so each quilt gets that kind of um, number assigned, and then that's how we reference it in our in-house database. And you can also reference it on our online database, because everything in our collection gets posted on our website. Oh, Once wow. it's been accessioned and photographed, that'll be the last step in the accession progress. And how many quilts do you have in the collection here? Well, it's the end of our fiscal year, so we just did a count. So we are up to 6,060 wow. quilts. Wow. But I have a feeling even since that count, a few more have come in. Wow. You know, over COVID, when everybody was at home, everybody was going through closets and sorting. Right. So we did not slow down a beat. In fact, we um, the last two years are a couple of our largest years. Wow. In part because we're getting collections now. So like the Hopi collection is nearly 90 pieces. Wow. Really well researched, re documented. Uh, there's a book on these. Um, so that's the kind of thing that we are really looking to add to the collection. Our quilts with great information and great research. So. so if a visitor was to come on tour here, could they come to this room? They can do a behind the scenes okay. tour. They can walk through and see all the different things we have going on. Um, it is kind of a special thing that you have wow. to set up. Um, but yes, we love having people come behind the scenes. And I think they are fascinated to see the kind of care we give the collection. Yeah. Oh, that room was so cool. So do you remember they have a volunteer there? She's yes. 93 yeah. years old. Yes. And she comes every Tuesday or Thursday. Or it was Thursday, it, Thursday. Every Thursday morning. Right, to fold quilts yep. and to do it. And up until about a year ago, she lives close to a museum. She would walk. Yes. Right? right. And every week she says, oh, I'm not sure. Maybe now I'm going to retire. Yeah. And she's they, done it for almost 20 years. Yeah. Carolyn and her staff were truly amazing and it was such an honor to meet them as part of our tour. Did you know that they have over 60 volunteers who work with them to keep the museum running smoothly and to help take care of those over 6,000 quilts? She was so knowledgeable about the quilts and the exhibits and she shared so much amazing information. 
That's right. We moved forward in our tour and had the opportunity to see the storage room. So follow us now as we learn more about how to store a quilt. I can move as many shelves as I want. Look at this. This is so cool. Oh, that is awesome. Yeah. So this is considered high density storage. What it basically means is we only have one aisle at a time. Okay. And so we save all of that space. Oh my so gosh. Isn't that amazing? I feel like I'm at Willy Wonka's. So you can see how long the shelves are. They're packed full. All of the quilts are um, have label or the boxes have labels on them. And then we use this really high tech sticky note. <laughs> <laughs> so it tells us when things need to be refolded. But a, a volunteer crew can come in and just look at the colors, and they can go right down the line get all the quilts that need to be refolded and get those taken care of. So it works really well for us. So how many quilts fit in a row? It depends too, because some we put two to a box. Oh, okay. sure. If they are small quilts, mm. we'll put four to a box or whatever they fit comfortably in. So okay. there's probably a different number in each row. So the bulk of our collection is in boxes and those have to be refolded. We do have flat storage units. Um, those are very limited and we tend to put things like silk crazy quilts, things mm. that the materials oh, okay. really just don't do well with folding, but we're also moving into a lot more rolled storage because the, the art quilts that are being made today just oftentimes don't fold well. Mm -hmm. so. When you roll quilts, do you roll them onto themselves or do you put sheets or some kind of paper between them? How do you roll them? We put tissue on them. We always put an initial layer of tissue over the surface of every quilt when we either mm -hmm. fold or roll because that way you don't have any fabric on fabric abrasion. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. But we use pretty, depending on the quilt, um, we have a couple really large rolls. We have some smaller ones, but you don't want a real small radius on that roll right. because mm -hmm. it's going to roll it too tight. And rolling is something that um, we opted initially not to do a lot of. We've always had some, but it's more um, it's more labor intensive to roll because mm -hmm. um, what we discovered is if you roll a little too tight, then you're pushing your fabric against your quilting stitches and you can get a ridge mm -hmm. that builds up there. Oh. You have to keep it really straight and even across it. So it takes a lot of bodies to really be sure that it's rolled carefully. And it's one of those things where not too tight, not too loose, right. just right. It's awesome. wonderful. I think it's great, too, that you have all this information on your website. So all of us can, you know, right. use yes. these tips, too, for our own collections yeah. at home. You know, even with your stash, your fabric stash, um, I always try to mention this to groups because I love going to an artist studio and they have their fabric like color coded mm -hmm. and beautiful right. stacks on the shelf. And I'm like, you, you do know you're probably going to get a strip of fading where that fold right. is oh, yeah. exposed. And so, you're, and, and just the hot and cold issue, never having quilts in the attic or the basement because the temperatures are too extreme. Um, you know, People always think, you know, yeah, laying a quilt out on a bed is a great way to store it because it can be laid flat. Right. But if you, you know, you think, oh, I've got the curtain shut or the blind shut, but there'll be a little sliver that comes through oh, and it's going to shine sliver. on yeah. your quilt. And also you're going to get that sliver of light exposed wow. down the middle. I never even thought about The things of that. we don't even think about, right? right? Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I... and it, the balance, I think, that that is always good to think about is, is this a quilt that's really important to me that I want to preserve for long term? Right. Is this my masterpiece? piece or is this quilt I'm going to use and then you have two very distinct different kind of sets of rules if right, you will, right. that, that you want to follow because if you want to make it last you got to right. take good care of yeah. it right. they're living breathing things right yes at my house though it's like you have to finish it first before yeah, <laughs> yeah well that is there is that <laughs> I resemble that Lynn <laughs> oh it was such an amazing experience it's being in there but quilters, I have to tell you, the most frustrating part of the whole so visit for Miss Pam here, big tears, <laughs> right down that aisle on, as you looked at the screen on the right hand side, yes. about halfway down was the reconciliation quilt. And Miss Carolyn is so guarded about her quilts that since it wasn't time for it to come out, it didn't come out and we didn't get to see it. Yeah, I was so excited because I thought, oh, she's going to show it to me. It, up until a couple of years ago, it was the quilt, the highest price in an auction for yes. a private mm -hmm. quilt. And it's there. It was there. I got to touch the box, but not see. It's so. not on display. But she promised us that it's going to be on display next year. Yeah, they're celebrating right. their 25th anniversary. That's right. So it's another opportunity for us to go back. That's uh, right. Oh, I'm down. Good, Let's good go. idea. Mark the calendar. 
Well, next, Carolyn took us into the collection room to see two quilts up close and personal. Now, the first is known as a soldier's quilt. Take a look. And this is oh. a probably mid 1800 soldiers quilt. Wow. So what we would consider the Crimean War period. Um, soldiers quilts were made, or what we call, loosely call soldiers quilts. Um, we call them that because they're made of wool soldiers uniforms fabric. Wow. They're oh, okay. probably made by tailors who were serving in, in the war. Um, so made by men who were using it as either way to, um, there's, there's two school of thoughts, either, either professional tailors who made it out of the scraps from uniforms mm -hmm. or um, soldiers who were recuperating from an injury. There's some oh. 19th century paintings that show a soldier sitting up in bed with pieces in the same color wow, right. working on that. Wow. But we don't know about that because the technique is really, um, it would take a lot of skill to plan and produce this. Right, So we right. think it's possible that it was professionals. Right. But we see these wool quilts in these beautiful geometrics in the 1700s, very okay. early on. There's some of our earliest quilts. Then we see them in the mid-1850s-ish period, which is the time of the Crimean War okay. in Europe. And then we see them much later in the 1890s again. And we have the only one that we believe was actually documented as made in the U.S. Otherwise, they are typically made in, in England. Wow. So, right. And I believe this one said it was made in the U.K. Yes. Right. Yes. The wool is so beautiful. And it's it's uh, uh, felted or what they boiled wool. Okay. okay. So it doesn't fray. So mm -hmm. when they sew the pieces, they butt the pieces right up next to each other. They really don't have a seam allowance. Oh, That's okay. What we call intarsia. Mm. And so because the wool doesn't fray, you can do that stitch. Oh, you can see oh, where they're right. just like whip stitching it together. Exactly. But barely. Look at those tiny little diamonds. Yes. Tiny diamonds. And but they, they guess... come in all kinds of different variations. But this overall look of the geometric shape with the kind mm -hmm. of expanding patterns and and this complex design is, is pretty consistent in them. So do you think they use like paper templates to cut a, the pieces? What do you, how do you think they cut know. it? Um, we don't know. Because we have know. a die for this. Yes. <laughs> yes, you guys have the, the machine we need. Yeah. Now, we don't know. Um, there's been um, some wonderful research by a woman named Annette Jero, and she had a couple of tools that she showed, and she thinks they just cut them. And so them. They and just cut them. Yeah. They're just so good Again, at it. That's why you yeah. think this is not someone who is not familiar with the right, rage right. and does, um, doesn't have um, some pretty good experience. With I it. think also this embroidery, right, is so oh, perfect. And this is what makes this piece really unusual. It's just got this added incredible border on it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, this one, you know, in many ways is very simple compared to some of the others that we Really? Have. I'm also amazed at how how old these are because some of we're always you know we always come out with new dyes that uh, you know we do the research on them. A lot of them come from the 1800s or the early 1900s, but I don't have anything you know that goes back to the 1700s. Right. Well, and you know that one of the fascinating things we discovered, you know, these so many of these designs are just ubiquitous. They are you find them throughout history, you find them throughout the world. So um, I was opening up our UNL newspaper one day and there was an article with a big picture and I was like, what is that quilt? Well, it wasn't a quilt. It was the floor of a Roman bath that our archaeology students were uncovering in Turkey. Oh but gosh. each block was like, okay, there is a eight-pointed star. Right. There is your Rob Peter to pay Paul. There's your cathedral window. So some of those designs have been around since Roman times and it's so intriguing. I think what we what I certainly didn't know so is that people traveled so much and culture and designs traveled the world. Oh, right. And so there's all these interconnections. You know, we're, we're all the same. We're yeah. all the same around yep. the world. Yeah. And the things that we love are all, you know, the beautiful designs, um, creation of something beautiful is something yeah. we all share. It's universal. Right. It's universal. I absolutely love that 
were all connected yeah. in the yeah. story that she told. It was, that was a wonderful. great story. Yeah, yeah that was it great. was. And I don't know about the two of you, but the hardest thing was not touching right. that quilt. No, it was so it vibrant so and the close. embroidery <laughs> and oof. But we so were good. Cool. We, we were. didn't do it. All right. So this next video shows a top. 10 moment for all of us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yes. We got to put on the white gloves to protect the quilt and help Carolyn fold that wonderful soldier's quilt to reveal the next one lying under it. So check this out. This is a relatively new piece. So it does, it's not been put in a box yet. So we're just gonna hold some hands. Yes. Okay. Bring oh my in. gosh, I can hardly wait. Okay, okay so tell so me how to do, do a bolt it back here. So I'm gonna okay. have you cross your hands so that you can keep that. Okay. There it is. Oh. So you see a tiny little bit of seam allowance in some places on that, but there you can really see the way it's getting put together. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. We go up and over. Look at this. I'm going to do this wrong. Okay. Let's bring it out a little bit wider because then that inside piece is going to be nice and flat. And we're going to go down to this end. Okay. Are so cool. And bring it back. Now I'm going to go back here. And then we're just going to make a little fold because I want okay. it to end here. Hey, oh, the pressure. We should get shirts that say honorary quilt folders. <laughs> I'm, I'm game. You know? <laughs> Trained by Carolyn. So what we're trying to make sure we do is not to um, crunch this fold. So kind of keep your hand. I, I would put your hand right there. And then you know exactly where you want this to go. And remember, it doesn't have to go to the edge. Okay. Perfect. Great. Okay, now let's bring it to the end of the table. Oh. And you can see how heavy it is. Oh. It's heavy. And then typically we would have large rolls of tissue paper in here to support those last folds. That's only time we use a rolled tissue. But this is still probably living as a bundle in a sheet until it's through the accession process. Oh, look at this. So this oh, is an this. Indian quilt. Um, oh. Probably, I think we had like a 1980 to 2000 date on it. Um, this would have been made in kind of the upper west corner of um, India into the Pakistan across the border there. And so how do they make this yeah, little border, border is what I'm trying to figure out. I think it's just cut out and stitched just pieces. So the, the quilting stitches are oftentimes actually hold the quilt together. It's not got batting and it. it's just layers of thin sari fabric. Mm. Oh, okay. And they typically work from the outside to the middle. Oh, where we, we yeah, we work backwards, yeah. And they, you see, in, in our photos, you'll see women sitting cross-legged all the way around it, stitching on it. Wow. And this one actually is a relatively simple piece from this area. Mm -hmm. um, oftentimes, they have um, bling on them. They'll have mirror work. They'll have pom-poms. The more bling they add to them, the more specialized. It might be for a special occasion, like a wedding or something mm -hmm. like that. I love the different colors of the quilting yes. thread. I never think of doing that. I always just quilt it in the same color. And I think we need to quilt in different colors. And, and you really can bound. see it on the back as well. Wow. Mm. It's not bound. And it's a knife edge. Yeah. Just both mm -hmm. edges folded and stitched together. Huh. That's interesting it's beautiful. too. And, uh, you know, our in international oh, collection is just so amazing because, like I said earlier, we didn't even really know these traditions existed. And right. then to see that they are all <coughs> patterns are closely tied to India, to Central Asia, to China, Japan. Um, wow. So that design is just truly universal. Oh, that was such a great quilt. It and was. It was so, you know, you talked about the different colored of quilting thread and you really couldn't see it in the picture, mm -hmm. but it just kind of like a running stitch, yes. all different colors. It was fascinating. It was I like just red and blue. Yeah, and it, just, yeah. it brought so much dimension to the quilt when you were up close and personal yeah. to it. Well, one of the striking things about the quilts that we saw was the similarities between the museum's collection and the quilts that you and I make, whether they're from 100 years ago or from halfway around the world. As Carolyn said, the Raleigh quilt from Pakistan, which we were just looking at, was made between 1980 and 1990. This is a quilt that we saw just before in the quilt storage room, and it, it was just stunning. It, it was. really was. It was. And the border was beautiful because mm -hmm. tiny little border, and they had cut tiny little hand arches cut. Yeah. out of it. It was amazing. And the minute I looked at that quilt, I saw an Ohio star, didn't both of you? Oh, oh absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
In fact, as we went from quilt to quilt at the museum, we were breaking down the shapes and talking about the dyes to use, and we decided to recreate some of them for you back here in the studio ourselves. The cubes are great for ins um, inspiring quilters, but they're also perfect for translating something like the uh, quilts yeah. we saw mm -hmm. into a, a current project. Each, each mix and match block has eight shapes that all work together to make 72 mix and match blocks, but really the possibilities are endless. That's right. And the cubes come in six different sizes. Four, six, eight, nine, ten, and twelve inch finish blocks. Now, for recreating this particular design, I decided to go with the eight inch size. Now, this eight inch cube is on sale today, Erica. How much is it? It is. So it's normally two twenty nine ninety nine. Today, it's going to be one sixty one ninety nine. You're going to save sixty nine dollars. It's a great deal. That's, That's awesome. So um, I'm going to open it up, and in this small case here, I'm going to pull out the cutting mat because we're going to need one of those. Perfect. Erica, what happens if you try to use the die without a mat? Absolutely nothing. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. So we're going to open up here. Now, Erica, what two dies do we need You know, need we for only this? need two. So okay. we are going to need shape one. Shape okay. one is going to be our larger square in every cube. It's going to be the whole corner pieces as well as the center. Excellent. And then we're just going to need the quarter square triangle, which is shape four. Correct. Right there. Yep. That's going to create this hourglass block. Perfect. But it's also going to create the border treatment. Perfect. And then I'm actually going to pull out one more die from this eight inch cube that we're going to use a little bit later. And it's shape number five which are smaller half square triangles. Okay. Right. Okay, so I'll pull those three dies out and we'll put away our cube. All right, so we need to cut and we're gonna use our Go Me fabric cutter today what? because we can. Ta -da. Awesome. That's right. I love mine. I use it all the time because it fits right next to me on my sewing table. Right. And I can be ready. All right, Pam, if you want to hand me a couple of dies. Okay. There we go. There go. I'll cut if you so, guys put fabric. Lynn, here we go. Now we're gonna show you, you wanna show fan folding? Sure. Okay. So we can always cut up to six layers of quilting cotton, mm -hmm. but you can also cut other fabrics like flannel, felt, denim, wool, like yep. they did in the soldier's quilt. So. And we're gonna use our Go Me today, so you can actually use your four, six, eight, and nine inch cubes through your Go Me, and they're gonna be all that same price of 161, which is a $69 savings. Perfect. That is fantastic. Is that, that's yep. six layers That'll right work. there. That's six layers right all there. All right. And, and then I'm gonna cut. Okay. She's gonna there cut. Go. All okay. right, then we're gonna go ahead with our quarter square triangles. Off. And I was using some scraps. Okay, I'm gonna so turn it just a little bit we're here so I can. We're a little bit off. I, I'm a little bit short on the fabric that we need for that, but we'll still get a couple out okay, of it. Okay, Lynn, I'm just gonna cut four layers here. Okay. Uh, two layers, and I've got two layers here, I think. All, All right, right, so we got on here. There we go. It's because it's on this little. Oh, there oh, we go. It's on yeah, the mat. It needs so to be on a It has to be flat straight. <laughs> surface. There we go. Perfect. It didn't right. like being on the no, funky side. No, it didn't. So there's our perfect there's squares. There's our perfect squares. Okay, and then we've got this one all ready for Perfect. you to go. Perfect. Now the thing about working with quarter square triangles, and I think you all will agree with me, is you have to keep track of your pieces and how they lay out. Mm -hmm. So the reason we, we, we've we cut them the way that we have so that we've got our, our length of grain, our tight part right across the outside. So you wanna make sure that you don't get confused and take what should be the outside and sew it together like a half square triangle because then you're gonna have a really stretchy bias right. on the outside. Which is very tricky. Very tricky. So, it, but it still is gonna work because with this border trip treatment, mm -hmm. because we're still gonna have our, our lengthwise grain right here where it's nice and tight to put our rows together and our bias is gonna be sewn together over there. Right, and then your quilt top will lay flat. Yep. That's so, absolutely right. Thing to recognize about our quarter square triangles and our half square triangles, we cut off those dog ears. Mm -hmm. So from this point here to this point here is that perfect quarter inch seam. So I don't know about you, but cutting triangles are really hard by hand. It is. We have a die for all it of is. that. That's right. And it's gonna go together really slick. And this design, I'll put it the right way, is so prominent. Those four quarter square triangles. So you see it pretty. in so many projects. So really, it was very simple to put together, and I'm sure it took a lot longer to cut using the traditional method. 
Yeah. Like oh, oh, there I had half a one. There. Perfect. Perfect. Yep. And you can make this, did you mention that, in any size? Yes. Now, we use the eight, and because of that, and this is a nine-patch layout, so we've got one, two, three across, that means we've made a 12-inch block using our eight-inch cube. Right. I love that. So if you use the four-inch cube, you'd make a six-inch block and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's great. Ah, oh, I love that block. And I just love this border treatment. You could use this for so many quilts, and it, it kind of echoes what's in the quilt, but it could be used in so many different designs. And wasn't there a small little strip between there, Eric? There was. So there was probably about an inch, I'm thinking. So I'm thinking it was maybe you could use the one and a half inch strip die, sure. one of my favorites, and then it would finish at just that one inch to just kind of set things apart. Yeah, it's so pretty. And then again, on the other side of the border. Excellent. Awesome. All right, great. we're gonna hand this all your great. pieces back to you, Ms. Okay, Erica. Okay, I'll take my pieces. I'm gonna go home and make more box. All right. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm really excited for our quilters to recreate some of these historical quilts we share today using AccuQuilt. Oh, me too. It was really a lot of fun. So let's give two of them something to help them make their quilts no matter where they go. We're gonna give away two of our green rolling totes. That's a great idea. Yeah. Okay. I've done that before. So our rolling totes are perfect for all those quilters on the go. So our Ready, Set, Go fits inside that Go fabric cutter. You can put your cube inside. That back piece zips off so you can put in your cutting mat. But I actually put my two and a half inch strip die mm -hmm. and my uh, yeah. 10 by 24 mat there. There's pockets for other dies. The handle lifts up and you can just take it anywhere you want to go. That's right. So the, our first lucky winner of our green Go rolling tote is Drum roll, please. Jill L. from Tecumseh, Alabama. I'm sure I said All that. Right. Right. Congratulations. Congratulations anyway. Thanks for watching, Jill. The second winner of this giveaway is, drum roll, please. Mary T. from Fort Myers, Florida. Congratulations. Right. Congratulations. Awesome. Quilters, be sure to stay to the end of the show to find out which quilters are the winners of today's special giveaways. Oh, it's going to be great. Wait till you find out. All right, now if you need any dies, fabric cutters, or cubes to start making your historical quilts, today is the day to make your purchase. For today only, we're offering you 30% off your order, plus free shipping when you spend $100 or more if you live in the contiguous U.S. So today, if you're thinking, gosh, I want to get that ready, set, go, it's $150 wow. off. Wow. We're going to ship it to you free. Awesome. Use the promo code SUMMER30 for this amazing discount. Plus, if you spend more than $300, you will receive a free Go Me fabric right cutter starter set. Some exclusion supply, so be sure to check the website for details. Now, this deal is only good until midnight central time tonight, so don't wait too long. Yes. Quilters, several of the quilts that we wanted to highlight were part of a current exhibit at the museum called Abstract Design in American Quilts at 50. Abstract Design in American Quilts was an ex exhibition originally displayed in 1971, 50 years ago, yes. at the Whitney Museum of American Art in New York. Now, the collection was put together by Jonathan Holstein and Gail Vanderhoff, who started collecting quilts and were struck by the similarities between historic quilts and the modern art movement. The exhibit became a cultural phenomenon, and versions of this exhibit traveled the world throughout the 1970s. In short, this exhibit helped to elevate how quilts were viewed, mm -hmm. showing them as the pieces of art that they truly are. Quilters, we have to tell you, this exhibit is absolutely stunning. And it was hard for us to narrow down the yes. quilts to highlight in the show. So let's head into the gallery.
So will you talk about this tumbling black one? Because this is, that's a really classic pattern. So it's tumbling blocks, baby blocks, right? Um, and it's so dimensional. And it's one of those um, quilts that give you such a sense of depth and illusion in them. And so when you're looking at it, and you notice that you walk up to it, at some point you see the actual cube, which is done with the, usually with a light, medium, and dark fabric. This one isn't as quite designed as you'll see in other ones, but they have done the lighter fabric kind of at the top of the cube. So it creates this incredible three-dimensional quality to it. Um, and it is really a difficult pattern because, as you all know, when you're working with diamonds, right. you can get them skewed. I try to make one like this, and oh my gosh, I battled it. Because you just pull that a little bit, and it's pulled out of shape, and then you don't have that precision that you need to get the overall design. Well, and you also have to create a Y seam, which some cultures are a little nervous about. Yeah, and I didn't know how to do that when I started. I eventually kind of figured it out, but, um, and I was doing a very small piece, but, um, but yeah, um, it's like 1880, 10, 1900. So um, a lot of these piece, um, piece quilts that have multiple fabrics like this, they oftentimes won't repeat a fabric. And then we consider it a charm quilt. I don't know that this is officially a charm quilt, I do think we're seeing a fabric with two. Yeah, I see there at the top mm -hmm. a couple of them. Yeah. But a lot from this time period, that was kind of one of the goals is that you would trade fabrics and not repeat your fabric in it at all. Okay, so tumbling blocks are such a classic design and it's one that quilters love making still today. And I found I found the idea of a charm quilt that doesn't repeat yes. a fabric. I didn't know that. I, I, did, so. I didn't either. I didn't either. <laughs> and then from that point on, did we not look at every quilt and see if it every was every single one? Quilt? Yes. Right. Because yeah. the one with the triangles, we decided really was. Right. When we're right. looking at it. Yeah. We'll so, save that for another day. We need to have a fabric swap. We do. Oh, we do. We'll work on that. Okay. 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 Well, okay. Back to the show. <laughs> In fact, we know that quilters ask all the time about how to make tumbling block quilts. And I think that's one of the reasons why quilters love our angled guidelines on our strip die so much because it lets them cut quick and accurate diamonds for this very design. Right, and we have a whole bunch of videos on how to use our mm -hmm. strip dies. Mm -hmm. If you wanna make tumbling blocks, you wanna cut them at that 60 degree angle. That's right. You have to do a little y seam, but don't be scared. We have videos scared. for There's that videos. as well. All right, I'm super excited for the next quilt we get to look at. It is a beautiful wool courthouse steps quilt from the 1800s. Let's uh, learn how to using wool is different than a quilt from made from quilting cotton. Log cabin is probably the most popular right. quilt pattern that we know of and that was being made. And, and I particularly like it because it's simple and you can start in the center and build your way out. And just by the way you place your fabrics by using lights and darks, Particularly in other styles, you can create patterns like the streak of lightning. But with the courthouse steps, you're really going from side to side, and you're not using your colors in the same way. But the idea is you have like the center here, and then the steps up to the courthouse, and the columns of the courthouse, and the, the, the roof across it. So this one, the individual blocks stand out a lot more than you would see in other um, log mm -hmm. cabin patterns. And log cabins were... I think our earliest log cabin, we have one of the earliest dated ones, um, and it's 1867. Wow. And then they are made throughout time. And we put this next to this beautiful Amish quilt. They're both wool. And um, the difference, I think, in wool is that it absorbs light. And so it, they, they take on a whole different characteristic than a cotton that reflects the light back to you. Mm -hmm. So they really have a different feel. And um, Jonathan Holstein quoted a scholar that he knew who said that, the wool quilts look like, and especially the wool Amish quilts look like they were made under moonlight. Oh, wow. So I think that's really appropriate for that. And this one has the red center, the red sometimes center. yellow, right? Too. Yeah, and that, that's typical, and you know, we call that the hearth of the, the log cabin. But we're gonna see a number of log cabins in this show that have different, um, maybe a yellow or pink. Um, so it's not something that was always done, but it is kind of a predominant feature of them. Okay, having them made out of wool was so, such so cool. almost a surprise, right, I think, right. to all of us. Yes. Yes. But the difference in seeing the sheen and, and seeing how the fabric looked on the display was amazing. Oh, absolutely. I personally have had a courthouse steps in red, white, and blue on my bucket list <laughs> for quite some time for my little quilting bucket list, and I don't 
think I'm gonna do wool, but I am pretty inspired to go make it oh, right now. Oh, it's awesome. so cool. All right, did you know that you can use our log cabin dye to make it? I happen to have one at home already waiting, but if I didn't, today's deal would be the time Absolutely. to get it. Absolutely. Because it's normally $119.99, Right now, it's only eighty four ninety nine. So you've got a great deal. Yeah, it's I, okay. I have to tell you, I'm working on courthouse steps, and yes. I love that log cabin die. I want to get started on it. Yeah. <laughs> we, this was the thing, right? We saw the quilts and we we're like, we should go home and sew. Oh, right. so inspiring. The next quilt we're going to show you is one that really spoke to me because I love making flying geese quilters. Check this one out. So this is Wild Goose Chase, which, you know, you hear people talk about Wild Goose yeah. Chase patterns all the time. So we're looking 1880 to 1900. Yeah, and this one is a great example of um, another inherent vice in the dye, because um, in this period of time, a green was always a difficult dye to achieve. Um, there just wasn't a natural um, element or um, plant that would yield this. So it was always a struggle to create the dyes. And so you can see that this one ranges from a pretty dark green to where it's completely lost color. And looks and like tan. Is, yeah. And mm -hmm. when I when I started out in quilting 25, 30 years ago, we would look at these red and like sometimes red and orange and tan quilts. We'd say, why did she choose why that color? That? And then we realized it was because it was this fugitive green, meaning that it just oxidizes. And it's definitely right. um, worsened if the quilt has been in a lot of light. So you can see probably it's right. times this might have been folded in such a way that parts of it were getting a lot more light in or the center. Maybe it laid on a bed in the side where the window mm -hmm. came yeah. in in the morning. Any kind of exposure right. is going to mm -hmm. really hurry that up. Um, I actually saved a piece of fabric because I worked for a, a shop that sold antique quilts and fabrics. Uh, but I have a great piece of fabric that has a label on the top of it. So it's folded and it's this tan color. Mm -hmm. And then you open it up and inside it is the most beautiful emerald green with this shine to it. So you can see what happened to that fabric just from that top layer having some exposure. Wow. Mm -hmm. So Erica, tell us what shapes we'd use to so make this. If we're using, if we're going with an eight inch cube, and I don't know that we are, I think maybe it might be six. That's pretty so. small. It's pretty small. It's so pretty small. If we flip over and talk six inch, then we've got our shape number four. Those are our quarter square triangles, right. right? We've got our flying geese, so that's our shape number four, and then number five on the sides. Right. We've got our number one, so that would be a three inch square, right? Right. But if you did two, four, but if we six, do, eight. if we do it as an eight, if we do it, if we if we use it as an eight, then you've got that eight and a half inch square, right, in the middle, the eight inch finished square in the middle. Okay. And then they've done wonderful quilting around it right. with this great design. And the way the, it, it doesn't go around the flying geese. So it's like, the, right. they go the one direction red go and then to, they and the crash into go. the other. And, mm -hmm. and I like the way they, they leave that, that corner on either end yes. open. And to me, and sometimes quilts with a lot of points like this, I say make me nervous. Right, right. Because it's it does sharp. create, it's too sharp. There's too much tension. But this has got those blank, that it's got places for your eye to rest and relax and relax that tension as you look at it. I love the red strips that mm -hmm. where it picks up the like a whole new design, and like it, almost almost like a rose stem. Like a rose or stem. That's what I was thinking with yeah. this with the thorns. And interesting that the green faded so much, but the red is no, not. The red pink. is wonderful. It still is red. It's our beautiful turkey red. Such a solid fabric. The red, the, that turkey red and the indigo blues. Sure, they just stay. They hold up. Oh. Such a great quilt, such a great quilt. Absolutely, absolutely. And I know totally why you were drawn to it. And we went ahead, I was so fascinated by the fading of the green right. and her story about the green. So we chose to use a very dark green, like she talked about mm -hmm. in right. our recreation here. Yeah, and that quilt was back, made in Pennsylvania back in the 1800s, yes. right? 1880s and 1800s. But just as amazing how modern it looked. Yes, absolutely. Right. And uh, there was another uh, story that Carolyn told that I wanted to share about uh, the importance of labeling. We talked quite a bit about yes. that. We're going to probably save that for another show. But 
there was also the the idea of quilters signing the front of their quilts, which I love that, you know, right. because these are works of arts, especially if you're creating your masterpiece. Right. You really should think about signing the front of your quilt. Why not? And add a date to it as well. Because she said if it tip. was a painting, you're signing the front of it, right? right? Absolutely. Not the back. That's right. Yeah. All right, so on that note, I'm going to step off the set just for a few minutes. Okay. I'm gonna go grab the next giveaway oh, off my desk. So okay. I'll be right back. All right, right, we'll see you in a minute, Lynn. We'll make a block. We will, okay. All right, so Pam, you couldn't wait to tackle a recreation yeah. of this quilt design, could you? It, no, I really was, I really loved it. And um, so I, like you, decided to use our mm -hmm. eight inch mix and match cube. Um, and I pulled out two other dies from it, um, and we we're going to use that two and a half inch strip die. Right. Because remember, there was that big sashing. Yes, that was like the, the mm -hmm. rose stem that right. reminded us. Right. And then the center is this really great die. This is the eight inch finished square. Yes, and this is a great die to accompany anybody who has an eight inch cue. Right. Now, I'm gonna share a little something because I can tell what everybody's thinking. They're wondering why the shape is on the die at an angle. It is. And we They're get asking. this all the time. And right. and it's very much on purpose. It right? is. It is. So if you think about driving your car over a speed bump, right. you're going to have a rough ride. You're gonna have a bump. Right. Well, think about sending your fabric and your die through the cutter. That center is gonna act like a speed bump. And we want it to have a nice smooth ride because we love our fabric. We're quilters, we love our fabric. Yes. So we have put our shape at an angle. You want, that's why we say to line up your lengthwise grain right along the lengthwise blade as it goes through the cutter so that it gets the best possible smooth cut as it goes through the cutter. Right, yeah, those rollers, just like a speed bump. So when you're laying fabric, lay it on the blade, over the shape, not mm -hmm. the die board. Otherwise, you're gonna waste fabric and you're gonna be crabby. That's right. Okay, so the eight inch cube, remember, so the four, six, eight, and nine inch cubes are mm -hmm. all the same price. Mm -hmm. uh, they're normally 229, 30% off. They're wow. gonna ship for 161 and ship free if you live yep. in the contiguous US. This eight inch square die, um, it retails for $49.99 with that 30% off. It's just $35, so a savings of $15. Great day to pick it up. It Be is. sure to use that code. Summer 30. Yep. And the um, two and a half inch strip die, all of our strip dies, 30% off today. Yep. So think about that if you're looking for that, okay? All right, well back to our block. Now yes. you are always telling everybody that there are flying geese in every single cube. There so are. how about you show us how that works? All right, so um, this is the flying geese section. Okay, first of all, um, if you are, were voting for Italy to win the Euro oh, 2021, yes, yes, you should totally make in this block. And the center is big enough for a soccer ball. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, use that Sports Go Sports Medley. Medley die and make a beautiful <laughs> quote for the Go Italy. Only you would think of that. I to really watched the game. Oh, it was great. Okay, so you only need two shapes to make flying geese. You need shapes four and five. So four is that quarter square triangle mm -hmm. and five are our smaller half square triangles. And they're from every cube are the right. same, four right. and five. Four and, and then five. shape number one, like you used to make the corners. Right. And then this is that, um, that hourglass, hourglass shape, shape yeah. that you made as well. Okay. Yeah. All right, so shall we cut some fabric? Let's cut some fabric. Okay. And while you're getting ready to do that, We've made an even bigger block this time with we our eight have. inch. We we've have. actually made, we've got eight here, we've got four and four. We've made a 16 inch block now with, again, our eight inch cube. Such a great idea. Okay, so first I'm gonna show you how to cut um, half square triangles. So what I did was I measured from here to here at a quarter of an inch on yep. either side and just rough cut width of fabric, okay? And we can always cut six layers Oh, so, here we go. I know, we're fan just folding fan again. folding it. AccuQuote, when we talk about fan folding, that's what we refer to. And then I'm going to put a cutting mat on it, okay? And I'm not worried about this tail because the only blades are in the die. They're not in the cutter. That's right. And this go me, Erica, it's just free, right? No code required. That's right. We'll put it gently and lovingly in the box for you. You don't have to do anything special. Yep. Spend $300. Well, yes. Yeah. Okay, so here's our small half square triangles which go on the side here. Which are gonna be our wings. Yep. For our goose. 
for our goose. And then I'm just gonna cut a couple of layers of this for our quarter squares. Perfect. Okay, and you already talked about the quarter square triangles. I did. And how you need to treat them like quarter square triangles, right. not half square and triangles. Right, and that's again how this works. So again, our quarter square triangle is gonna work for that because we're going to have that tight lengthwise grain on the outside. Okay, give a little love. Slide that mat because static is built up. And it is static -y in here. It I is look today. at your pieces just I know, to fly it. Just fly. Oh, flying geese. Oh. <laughs> I sent this actually <laughs> while I watched soccer. So it was super fun. <laughs> well, there you go. All right. Okay. We only need a couple. Yep. So um, here we've cut our pieces. So let's just lay a couple out okay. and show you. And then um, here, I have, have the some wings. Steps. Yep. This is what you would call a great chain piecing project. That's exactly what I did. I did a whole bunch of chain piecing for days. So you'll notice the quarter square triangles we cut off the dog ears, half square triangles we cut off the dog ears. So we're gonna line it up just like this. Right. And Erica, I do one side and then do the other. Is that yep, what you do? I do too. I do one side, then I press them all. Right, and so see right here, you're gonna think, ooh, Pam, you've done that wrong. Don't but panic. Don't panic. Don't panic. Because when you press it away to add the other side, it's gonna line up perfectly. That's right. Just for you, I pinned. She did. It was okay. really so she didn't lose a piece, but she pinned anyway, I and did. so I did. she gets a point. I do. Okay, and then here's our cute little blocks that we made. Now, Erica has this great pro tip on how to sew That's flying right. geese together. That's right. So whenever I sew my flying geese units together, I want to leave it so that the point is on the top, mm -hmm. okay? And the reason I do that is so that I can see that while I'm stitching, I'm stitching right across the very top of the point and not coming down and chopping off the top of my point on my on right. my goose. On your goose. On my goose. No gooses were hurt during no this process. No gooses hurt. That way when you open it up and press it, you've got your peak. And that's what we're looking for, right, quilters? Yeah. We're looking for that perfect point. Yeah, it's just amazing. So flying geese shapes four and five in every cube. Every one. And congratulations to Italy. That's right. We can't, seriously, we cannot tell you how, what an amazing experience we had at the Quilt so Museum. Great. It was it so was great. So much. In fact, we had way more quilts and fascinating stories than we can cram into one show. So look forward to hearing more about our visit in the future. And it truly was an inspiring day. And a huge shout out to Justin and Joe who came with us. They did all the filming and just let they us did. talk and did all the editing. <laughs> they um, did. It was great. And I could hardly wait to get home and sew, right? We kept seeing things and I was like, oh, yeah. I need to go home and sew that. Yeah. So if you were inspired as we were, now is the time to get all the dyes and mats you need for those projects yep. that you have in your quilting head. <laughs> Don't forget to use that code SUMMER30 for 30% off your order. If you spend more than $300, we're going to send you the Go Me Starter Set, um, which includes the Go Me and two dies, half square triangles, quarter square triangles, and a cutting mat and a pattern book. Plus, you get free shipping within the contiguous U.S. if you spend over $100. There you go. Well, these historical quilts were just fantastic. But Pam, do you know what would be almost as good as seeing a video of them? What is that, Erica? A hardbound coffee table book about the museum, published by our friends at Martingale. Oh, hey, so Lynn went to grab a couple. Can we yeah. have her come back and tell us all about our exci this exciting book? Yes. So here's the here's the actual book. So I'm gonna just set it right there set it and then right there. Yeah, okay. Greg will get a great shot Perfect. of it. All right. And so, <laughs> um, so this is called the American Quilt Treasures, mm -hmm. and uh, this is just a wonderful book. I actually have this at home. Okay. And uh, so I'm going to. Um, I'm going to open this up and just... We had so much fun looking yes. at this earlier. We flagged some that we wanted to, to share. make sure that you can see what I've got here. So this is this is a great one here. Oh, there's your geese. There's our flying our geese. Our flying geese. So many sizes. So, so this many. is a really great idea. So you could use the 4-inch cube, the 6-inch cube, and the 12-inch cube. Mm -hmm. Or the oh. 4, 6, and 8. I don't know. Just flying geese for days. Just lots and yeah. different sizes. And guess what this quilt's called? What? Flying geese. <laughs> flying geese. Well, there you go. I wonder how many flying geese there are in there. That's I don't know. Hundreds right. and hundreds of them. So this next one, so this one we all love because this is this inspires us why we all have si all the sizes of the cube. That's yes. right. You could yes. definitely recreate this uh, quilt with that. It's just full of all those various uh, square and a square I see. There's yeah. flying geese. There's all sorts of geometric shapes. Yes. And I love the fact that, you know, we talk about like scrap busting all the time, yep. but I feel like all of the, they had scrap busting back in the day, right? Everybody's, right. Everybody's, culture's been scrap busting forever. That's right. 
Quilters are the original recyclers, upcyclers. Yes. Yep. Yep. So, and then this one I thought was really. This, this is amazing. Totally be, this is just amazing. And this one's called um, triangles. So, and so, so you could Hasker totally triangles. Yeah. This do is definitely it. a, a um, chain piecing project. Do oh. not attempt this quilt without yeah. a go cutter. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Look at those tiny little half score triangles. And I do. I know Joe said pick three, but I have a bonus one. So this is a pickle dish. Pickle dish. Oh, oh look at that! So with your pickle dish die. Oh, isn't look that at beautiful? That. I love it. Okay, it's that just is super three pretty. Colors. Give you a little bit of inspiration. Yeah. There. You know, we red. talked about it when we launched the pickle dish about it being an old, old design. Right. Yeah. Wow. There you go. And look, it has those curved edges, so you could cut bias binding. There's a die for that. Wonderful. Yes, All right. Is. So uh, Martin Gale has had a self-proclaimed 40-year love affair <laughs> yes, with quilting, sewing, have. knitting, and crochet. They have published over 1,500 books and products, and their mission is to empower makers who use fabric and yarn to make life more enjoyable. That's right. Quilters, you might recognize them as that patchwork yes. place. They have been so gracious as to give us two of these great two. books to give away today. They have. That's amazing. Let's announce the winners of these unique gifts. That's right. And to make it even more special, we will be including a fat quarter of fabric printed with the International Quilt Museum's logo with each book. Eric and I had such a great time finding fat quarters. The winner of the first hardbound coffee table book published by our good friends at Martingale is, drumroll please, Barb M. from Manuka, Illinois. Congratulations, Thank you. Barb. Thank you. Oh, you're going to love this book. Our second winner of this exciting giveaway is Maestro, please. Sandra B. from Portage, Wisconsin. Congratulations, Hi. Sandra. Congratulations. You're going to love these books. So much inspiration. Yes. In Absolutely. And a huge thank you to Martin Gale for sponsoring this very special show for us. Thanks, That's right. You. This show has been so fantastic. We have shared a lot of content with you. But we share even more every week in our blog. Did you know we had a blog? We do. Yeah. As a matter of fact, Caden has written a great article for the blog about our visit to the Quilt Museum. So Amazing. be sure you check it out. It's usually filled with quilting inspiration, with organizational tips, all kinds of things from the AccuQuilt team like Caden and from our go-getters. So be sure that you sign up so that you can be notified whenever a new blog post goes live. The blog has a wealth of information, so be sure to check it out if you haven't already. We also share a lot of great content on our other social media sites as well. We share free patterns, inspiration, sneak peeks on new dyes. Mm. There's some of those coming out mm. soon. And even your own projects that you've shared with us. That's right. We love to share your stories, your quilts, and more. Plus, we share behind the seams <laughs> yeah, videos do. there from our live events on TikTok, Facebook, and Instagram. They show you a close-up look at our projects, fabric giveaways, and more. So be sure to check out our live show in a whole new way. <laughs> now, don't forget, the deal of the day is this. So be sure and don't miss out. For today only, until midnight Central Time, we're giving you 30% off your order. Plus, you'll get free shipping when you spend more than $100 if you live in the contiguous U.S. So think about getting that ready, set, go today. It's $150 right. off. Our cubes, four, six, eight, nine-inch cubes, uh, they have a $69 savings on those today. Uh, log cabin dies, strip dies. Make the courthouse nice. steps with me. All of those. There we go. <laughs> Now I've said it out loud. Now I have to get started. <laughs> so remember to use the promo code SUMMER30 for this amazing discount. Plus, if you spend more than $300, don't forget you're going to get a free Go Me fabric cutter starter set. Some exclusion supply, so be sure to check the website for the details. This offer is only good now through midnight central time, so place your order quickly. Okay, get your order in right now during the show. Use your phone's camera to capture this QR image. It'll take you right to the site. If you don't have access to a QR reader, no worries. Open up a tab in your browser, go to the top of the page and click on that plus sign. In that very top box, type in AccuQuilt.com slash party to place your order. That way you won't miss the minute of our show. That's right. You can also find these products at your local AccuQuilt retailer. So we are so glad that you could join us for today's very special show and a virtual tour of the International Quilt Museum. We hope that you check out this wonderful museum if you're ever near Lincoln, Nebraska. 
it is worth the detour. And thank you to Carolyn for such a lovely tour. Oh, oh she was fabulous. Thank you so much, Carolyn. And quilters, make sure you join us next Tuesday, July 20th, when we're celebrating stars and, are you listening? Strips launch party. We're excited to share a couple of brand new dyes with you along with some great projects that you don't want to miss. Now be sure to register for the event and join us at noon central time for your very first look. This is going to be a fun party with lots of fresh inspiration. And quilters, don't forget, we have our so hot, hot summer sweepstakes going on. The sweepstakes will run until September 21st. We'll be giving away a total of five AccuQuilt prizes worth a total of $1,400. The grand prize is $500. Amazing. Check out the live events page at AccuQuilt.com for the details. It's easy to enter. Just register for our Tuesday live events. The winners will be announced at the end of the So Hot, Hot Summer Sweepstakes on September 21st. This is so wonderful. Hey, yes. guys, so. There go. It wasn't so hot. Oh, it wasn't so, so hot. <laughs> There's also two other prizes that you can win during our so, so hot, hot summer sweepstakes. <laughs> we will also be giving away two $200 prizes at the end of July and August. To be eligible for these giveaways, you must register for at least two events in that month. It is just that easy. And such great ways to win. Quilters, make sure that you are an AccuQuilt Circle member because we're going to give you the winnings in the form of rewards points at AccuQuilt.com. After you win, you can simply apply the credit to all that AccuQuilt swag you've mm -hmm. been wanting to get. Thanks again for joining us today for this virtual tour of the historical quilts at the International Quilt Museum. And again, a huge shout out to everyone at the International Quilt Museum for allowing us to film there and interrupt their day. <laughs> um, we gave, got such a great inside look on their amazing collection. We hope you find our historical quilt translations helpful and inspirational. And remember, with AccuQuilt, we have a ton of ways to help you cut time so you can quilt more. Goodbye. Goodbye. Have you met AccuQuilt's Go Me? This lightweight, compact fabric cutter will inspire makers 